Orion had been chosen to be Princess Rima's keeper almost since the day she was born. His arrival in the kingdom of Sabia was a mystery, and one that even Orion himself could not explain. One day he woke up, face buried in the sand, and no explanation as to why he would be there. It was as if he was transported from another world, another dimension, or another time. The kingdom of Sabia was as foreign to him as was the rest of Fenrir. Wondering how he didn't die to begin with, Orion wandered through the desert in search of food and water. Instead, he heard a commotion. The king of Sabia was caught off guard by a monstrous scorpion in the desert. Orion acted on instinct, rushing in to save the king in his caravan. After getting to know Orion, his capabilities, and the honorable man that he was, the king and queen assigned him as Rima's keeper. The word keeper had many meanings to the royalty in Sabia, but most importantly it meant Orion was Princess Rima's protector and guardian. He escorted Rima any time she left the castle, and hardly left her side when she was in it. One day, Orion did leave to get Princess Rima a gift from the markets of Sabia, while Rima's own parents conspired against her. They felt she was unfit to rule the kingdom, and a few days later they locked Orion in a prison cell while they carried out the most heinous act imaginable. The king and queen murdered their own daughter by burying her alive. But something about the process triggered the gift that Orion brought Rima from the markets. It was a sand-colored pendant with the word queen written upon it. The gift raised Rima from the dead mere hours after her parents' betrayal, and shortly after, the kingdom of Sabia would bow to their new queen. After freeing Orion from the cells, she tasked him with going to the mainlands of Fenrir to search for an item of great power that will help her rule not only Sabia, but anywhere else on Fenrir that dares to bring Sabia harm. Orion heard of a group of pirates traveling across the Fen Seas, and hitched a ride to the mainland. When he arrived, the state of the mainlands of Fenrir was not what he expected. The pirates dropped him off in Vesuva, which was a melting pot of sorts according to the rumors that reached Sabia. But you can imagine the confusion when Orion found the town rather quiet. Orion and Rima did their research, and to be fair, they both had immense interest in the mainland's affairs long before Rima became the queen. This knowledge made Orion's first big destination clear, the town of Vorpal. Vorpal was said to be the main hub of information that circulates around Fenrir. If there was an item of great value and power, then surely someone there must know where it is. Vesuva was just a taste of what was to come. Orion walked the desolate streets of Vorpal, once bustling with children playing, citizens working hard, and street vendors akin to the markets in Sabia. What he expected to be a town full of life was now the closest he had seen to a ghost town. The few people he saw were elderly, and the occasional child ran from one home to another. They all seemed to be in a rush to leave Vorpal. What happened here? Orion asked, an older man carrying bags toward Vorpal's exit. New to Fenrir, I gather. The old man adjusted one of the bags hanging off his shoulder. Orion offered to help him to the exit, a gesture the elderly man accepted. A few days ago, King Ingvar and Lord Kazai visited Vorpal. It was the day of the Morska Festival, the most important day here in Vorpal. They recruited every able body here, to their war, despite Vorpal being a neutral town. That would explain the emptiness, Orion thought as he finished helping the man get out of town. Where will you go? He asked one last question. As far south as I can go without hitting the Deadlands, the old man replied. He nodded to Orion for the assistance, then left through the gates. King Ingvar and Lord Kazai's tales reached everywhere on Fenrir, so the names weren't foreign to Orion. In fact, Rima had always been fascinated with their confrontation on the top of Mount Shair. The battle that shook the world, they called it, even in Sabia. King Ingvar, the self-proclaimed god-king. Lord Kazai, the man who cannot die. These two are legends on Fenrir, and their stories reached far and wide. Orion always wondered if said stories were fabricated in an effort to promote the inevitable war. Who wouldn't want to fight for the God King? 
who wouldn't want to stand beside a man who could never be cut down? Though he had the thoughts, he wouldn't dare say it to Rima. In her youth, she loved to talk about them both. A funny way to put it now, Rima's youth abruptly ended and the queen that emerged from the grave her parents made for her cared less about the stories and more about how to protect Zabia from Ingvar and Kaza. Two people she revered as gods amongst men, as did most Fennens, she now saw as threats to her kingdom, and given her newfound power since her resurrection, it would be in Ingvar and Kazai's best interest to return the sentiment. Orion would serve Rima to his last breath, but even he wasn't sure what Rima had become. Before leaving Sabia, he tried to find the merchant who sold him the pendant that made Rima what she is now, but he couldn't find him. He just wanted answers so he could help Rima navigate her new power. Those answers wouldn't come. At least while Orion is on another continent, he wouldn't have to worry about Rima's safety. The queen could take care of herself now. Orion searched the bars and inns in Vorpal for people that could have information. He entered a bar inn hybrid known as the Sea Tides. The place was empty, but left in fairly good condition. The recruitment process must have been recent and carried out swiftly. There didn't seem to be many signs of resistance. Suddenly, Orion heard metal clanging outside the walls of the Sea Tides. How could he have missed knights in the town? He rested his hand on the handle of his sword as the doors opened. In walked a few onyx soldiers, Lord Kazai's men. And to Orion's further surprise, Lord Kazai himself emerged from the doorway. We've returned to help the elderly and children find safe places to stay either outside the walls of war or within the safety of Onyx. Are you lost, friend? With Kazai there, Orion knew he stood no chance if he decided to fight. He could take down the Onyx soldiers, but Kazai's katana, Rednefed, was said to be able to block any attack. I'm looking for the Temple of Beruva, Orion replied. Any idea where I can find it? Lord Kazai crossed his arms, and the look of concern on his face worried Orion. That's right in the middle of Obsidian's territories, I'm afraid, said the ruler of Onyx. Might be a bit of a challenge, but we could get you there. If I fight in your war, said Orion, hesitantly. Whether you fight beside me or not, you'll have to fight your way to the temple. Ingvar won't let you get there without resistance, explained Kazai. You're both still recruiting, it looks like. If I can get in and out of Beruva before the war begins, then it shouldn't be a problem. Orion thought his logic made sense, but the Onyx soldiers in attendance laughed at his response. Lord Kazai found the statement less amusing. Judging by your garb, I came to the conclusion you're not from this continent, said Kazai. Forpal was the last stop for us both. The war has already begun.